The Germans are resting behind the lines of the Eastern Front, their tents in neat rows. All is in order in the quiet and still of the night. It's cold, and the winter snow crunches under the jackboot of a guard. Looking up into the sky, the snow starts to drift down. It's peaceful here. Was that a noise from the sky? No, it's just the wind. Suddenly, piercing the still of the night, there's an otherworldly scream and a whoosh as a dark form speeds by. And was that a woman's laughter in the distance? There are no engine sounds, and the suddenly fearful German soldier loses his footing and whispers under his breath, Die Nachthexen. The world is all at once a bloom of fire and ash, and two more dark forms pass without a sound. Hearing the whooping and celebration of these supernatural creatures, the guard shakes himself from his fear and calls out, Die Nachthexen! Die Nachthexen! The Night Witches! In the sky, above, three planes of the soon-to-be-famous 588th Night Bomber Regiment, their engines now running, turn east for home. Time to rearm and refuel for another mission. Coming into land, they're greeted by their commissar, Yevdokia Reshkevich. The young girls that form the pilots and navigators are between the ages of 17 and 26. They are desperate to take the fight to the Germans and have traveled from all over Russia to join the all-women regiments. The 588th is where the least skilled of all the women are placed, but that didn't stop them from carving their name in history. In the early days, they were largely ridiculed by the Soviet men. Given men's uniforms that were too big and shoes all of the same size, the women did the best they could with the clothes, making them fit with belts or filling the large men's shoes with stuffing. The equipment they were given was woefully out of date. The Polykarpov PO2 was a two-man trainer, underpowered and made of cloth and wood. These old string bags were nicknamed crop dusters, or even worse, sewing machines due to the noise their tiny engines made. But the women of the 588 ignored the taunts, and despite the odds, turned the plane's shortcomings to their advantage. The planes at maximum speeds were far below the stall speeds of any of the German fighters giving them a tight turning circle. They were almost impossible to hit. They were susceptible to small arms fire and anti-aircraft guns. So their strategy was to attack in threes with a navigator in each plane. At her signal, the pilot would cut the engines and swoop in slowly, silently, dropping their bombs, dealing death from above. Unexpected, undetected, stealth perfected. If necessary, the other two would draw fire from the fighters or from the ground. They slept during the day and rose at dusk to take their vengeance on the invaders. This unnatural bravery and their stealth tactics earned them their title, the Night Witches. The German ace, Johannes Steinhoff said, we simply couldn't grasp that the Soviet airmen that caused us the greatest trouble were in fact women. These women feared nothing. I'm
32 women, both pilots and navigators, never came home. The 588th became highly decorated and respected, flying more than 23,000 sorties, dropping over 3,000 tons of bombs. 23 night witches were awarded the Hero of the Soviet Union, although they were disbanded just six months after the war and not allowed to fly in the victory parade given their planes were so slow. From 1956, after she retired from active service, their commissar Yevdokia Rajkevich took it upon herself to find the site of every single one of her girls that was downed, to mark the place and to pay her respects to each one of the incredibly brave night witches.